They are learners of BBI and MBA programs and they are viewers. How are you? Hope you are fine and ready with necessary papers and pen. If not, I request you to bring some blank pages and a pen now and keep them with you so that you can jot down the important parts of the program during broadcast. Learners, let us know what topics we will discuss today. Today, we will discuss the meaning and overview of conceptual framework of accounting and the level 1 and level 2 of conceptual framework of accounting from your textbook financial accounting. First of all, the meaning and overview of conceptual framework of accounting. Conceptual framework consists of two words, one is conceptual, another one is framework. Conceptual means the idea or plan related and the framework means the basic structure, constitution or boundary. So, the conceptual framework of accounting is the idea or plan of basic structure of generating and presenting accounting information to internal and external users. Conceptual framework of accounting is a coherent system of interrelated objectives and fundamentals that can lead to consistent standards and that prescribes the nature, function and limits of financial accounting and financial statements. And to ease the definition of conceptual framework of accounting, we can state that conceptual framework is like a boundary. The preparers and the users of accounting information are permitted to work within this boundary and they are not allowed to encross these rules and regulations. Viewers, for your better understanding, now I show you the overview of conceptual framework of accounting. You see in the screen, the conceptual framework of accounting has three levels as per the financial accounting standard board, where the first level relates to objectives of financial reporting. That is, it explains the why. Why means the goals and purposes of accounting. And the second level relates to qualitative characteristics of accounting information and the elements of financial statements. And this level links up the first level with the third level. And the third level that is recognition and measurement concepts uh, comprises the assumptions, principles and constraints of accounting. And this level describes the how that is the implementation of accounting rationality. Learners, now I discuss the level 1 or first level of conceptual framework of accounting which relates to objectives of financial reporting. The objective of financial reporting is to provide the investors, creditors and other users with their necessary information so that they can make their investment credits and similar decisions. Learners, you have remembered that the level 2 of conceptual framework of accounting relates to qualitative characteristics of accounting information and the elements of financial statements. Now, I discuss the qualitative characteristics of accounting information first. Qualitative characteristics of accounting information are those that distinguish better or more useful information from the inferior or less accounting information. And the information that the organization discloses in its annual reports or in the daily news should possess some characteristics. These are primary characteristics and secondary characteristics. Now, I discuss what the primary characteristic means and what the primary characteristics of accounting information should contain. At first, relevance. Accounting information becomes relevant when it is capable of making difference in user's decision. And to be relevant, accounting information should contain the predictive value, feedback value and timeliness. Predictive value means uh, the accounting information should be capable of making predictions about the past, present and future events. And feedback value means accounting information helps users to correct or confirm prior expectations. And timeliness means accounting information is available in time to influence the decision makers. 
So, the financial statements of the organization are to be prepared and presented just after the end of the accounting period, not after several months or years. Now, another compulsory characteristic that is reliability and accounting information can be relied if it can be free from error and personal bias. And to be reliable accounting information should have verifiability, representational faithfulness and neutrality. At first verifiability, verifiability is the ability to arrive at the same conclusion given the same information and methods by an independent evaluators or users. For example, if there is a note of using the state line method for calculating depreciation of an organization's tangible fixed assets, the amount of depreciation will be same if anyone uses this method. So, this is verifiability. Now, the representational faithfulness. Representational faithfulness is an important characteristic of reliability in that it means the information represents what really existed or happened. For example, the gross sales of an organization is 1 crore and 59 lakh taka, but if the organization discloses it as taka 1 crore and 60 lakh, then it will not be a faithful representation. So, the information presented should be free from at least any intentional error. Now, the neutrality. Neutrality is the characteristic that it should be free from personal bias. So, the information presented does not favor one's interest over another party. Learners, so far we have discussed the primary characteristics of accounting information. Now, we will discuss the secondary characteristics of accounting information. And secondary characteristics of accounting information consist of comparability and consistency. Comparability states that accounting information becomes more useful if it lends itself to intra comparison and inter comparison. Intra comparison means comparing an information of an organization of one accounting period with the same information of another period. For example, an organization sales of 2015 will be compared with the same information of 2016. Inter comparison on the other hand is the comparison of one information of one organization with the same information of another organization. For example, the Das Bangla Bank gave bonus 6 times in the year 2016, whereas the IFIC bank gave bonus 4 times in the same year. So, this information can be compared meaningfully. Another secondary characteristics of accounting information is consistency. Consistency states that the accounting terms, method and principles mentioned in the financial statements are to be used in a similar manner from one period to the next. Accounting methods can be changed if it can be demonstrated that the changes will be more favorable and this information should be disclosed with the justification for nature and effect of these changes. For example, in a business organization, the accountant changes the depreciation policy from state line method to double declining balance method as per the instruction of the management. And management provides a note to the financial statements explaining that the new method will be more justifiable than the old method, because the use of the fixed asset is higher in the early years of their expected lives. Learners, now we will discuss another part of the second level of conceptual framework of accounting that is elements of financial statements. Elements of financial statements are normally the elements of income statement and balance sheet and the major components or elements of these statements are revenues, expenses, gains or losses, assets, liabilities, owner's equity, etc. At first, revenues. Revenues are inflows or receipts 
or increase in equity or enhancement of assets or reduction of liabilities resulting from the business activities like delivering goods, services providing, lending money, rental of property, etcetera. For example, the cash received or receivable from the customers for providing goods or services either it may be in cash or on credit. Now, the expenses. Expenses are outflows or payments or in other words expenses are the cost of the assets consumed or the services provided in the process of earning revenues. For example, the salaries paid to the employees or the sales commission paid to the salesman etcetera. And the excess of these revenues over the expenses uh, of normal courses of actions over a period of time is called income or profit. Now, the gains. Gains are increases in equity resulting from the peripheral or other incidental transactions of an entity which are normally uh, irregular and non-current in nature. For example, if the fast food shop sells its air conditioner for taka 75,000, the book value of which is taka 72,000, then the organization will enjoy a gain of taka 3,000 that is 75,000 minus 72,000. But if the company sells this air conditioner for taka 70,000, then it will sustain a loss for taka 2,000 that is 72,000 minus 70,000. So, loss is the decreases in owner's equity resulting from the incidental or peripheral or other any uh, non-current or irregular transactions. Learners, you can ask is there any difference between income and gain? The answer is yes, though the gain is a part of income, but there is a basic difference between gain and income. Income is the difference between the revenues earned and the expenses incurred to earn the revenue over a period of time for normal courses of action. That is income generates from the sale of goods or services, but the gain results from the sale of fixed asset. And to make you understand clearly, I can cite an example. Suppose a grocer has earned a revenue of taka 1 lakh and 20,000 from the sale of his grocery items like rice, salt, oil, etcetera, for which he incurred an expense of taka 1 lakh. So, the additional 20,000 is the profit or income of his business, but if he sells the furniture or any other non-current assets of his business at more prices than the expenses, then his business will enjoy gain otherwise losses. Learners, now we will discuss another element of financial statement that is asset. Assets are resources which are acquired by the business at cost and will help to generate future benefits. It may be tangible or it may be intangible or it may be any prepayments like the land, building, accounts receivable, prepaid expense, goodwill, patent, etcetera. Now, we will discuss another component that is liabilities. Liabilities are outsiders contribution to the business or the outsiders claim on total assets. In other words, liabilities are the amount that the firm owes to outsiders for receiving or purchasing goods or services on credit. Suppose, the amount borrowed from a bank or the purchase on credit from outsiders. Now, another component that is owner's equity. Owner's equity is the owner's claim on total assets or the owner's contribution to the business or in other words, owner's equity is the residual interest in assets after deducting the liabilities. So, these are the major components of financial statements. They are learners and viewers. We are almost about end of our today's presentation. Hope you have understood the meaning and the overview of conceptual framework of accounting and the level 1 and 2. And because of time constraint, we cannot 
discuss the level 3 of conceptual framework of accounting. No more today. Hope see you again with the discussion of the level 3 of conceptual framework of accounting. Till then, keep fine. Allah Hafiz. Let's do it.